Good evening there, everybody. I am so sorry for hopping on a little late tonight. It's been just one of those kind of Mondays. Oh, looks like we're a little bit crooked here. Whoop, let me straighten that out this way. Um, all right, I also have a furry visitor. <laughs> so if you see a little uh, tan tail flick through the screen, that would be Autumn, who snuck in just before I was ready to hit live. <laughs> and she's demanding a little bit of attention. So she's going to help us stamp, apparently. <laughs> Um, all right, so hope you all have been doing well, had a great weekend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there we go. I think I'm all lined up now. All right, so again, apologies for being just a little bit behind schedule tonight. Um, like I said, sometimes, you know, it's just one of those days, and uh, that's how it's going to go. <laughs> all right, well, let's jump right into it. I don't have a whole lot of uh, chitter-chatter to talk about beforehand. Hopefully, you have all have seen the um, post with the new online offerings. Uh, I'm going to feature a couple of those new products tonight, which really don't feel all that new because we used to carry circle punches. So currently back in the offering are one and three quarter and two inches. So it's really nice to have some circle punches back in stock. I uh, really love to be able to do that. There's a really quick and easy way to make your circles. So that's why I focused on those particular sizes tonight because it made really quick and easy work for me. Um, so yeah, so again, thanks for joining me, even just a little bit late. All right, so here we go. Um, and remember, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, I happen to have a uh, kitten on my shoulder right now <laughs> who demanded attention. So um, if you uh, bear with me while I organize things with just one hand for a little bit. Um, all right, so for tonight, you need to have a piece of cardstock that is five and a half by eight and a half. And we did one score line at four and a quarter. Now, if you choose to, you can go in right now and do another score line at two and an eighth, but I'm also gonna show you how we can just fold that back and do use our bone folder to make sure that everything lines up really nicely when we do this particular fun fold tonight. Uh, you need a piece of neutral cardstock that is a one and three quarter circle, and then a strip that is three and a quarter inches wide by any length you want. So whatever phrase you have picked out for this particular layout, you are gonna just do whatever you need and we'll trim it down to size. And then another piece of cardstock that's cut at two inches, a two inch circle, I should say. Mine is Old Olive, I forgot to mention this is Bangle Melody. And then a piece of designer series paper that's four by five and a quarter. I cut a piece out of um, the Hues of Happiness, one of the back sides of those sheets. I'm gonna be working with Taco Fiesta tonight. Um, so there's a little bit of a guacamole theme happening in my project. So I've got the green for the guacamole and the yellow for chips and cheese and that sort of thing. So I picked, I picked out that particular piece of designer series paper because it fits in really nicely with my taco theme for tonight. And it's not Tuesday, but we're close enough to Taco Tuesday, right? <laughs> Alrighty, so gather up your one and three quarter circle and whatever sort of imagery you brought along tonight uh, to add to that. So from Taco Fiesta, I'm gonna use this little guacamole bowl I'm going to use the, the stamp with the three chips. That's actually one stamp all together. And if, I love these little tiny, phrase, uh, not phrases, faces. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you tonight. These little tiny faces that they added to. So you can put these on the sides of the tacos and the, and, and the burrito and on the cactus and wherever they fit. And it just makes them all look that much cuter. So my little guacamole friend is going to look like a friend because he's going to have a little face. I'm very excited about him. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to first do my little tortilla chips. And again, apologies, I am doing this one-handed because Autumn, for some reason, is very clingy this evening and doesn't want to let me go. <laughs> I was away for the weekend and I think she's finally forgiven me for leaving her and now is demanding all of my attention. So <laughs> like I said, if you see a swoosh of a, uh, a tan-colored tail, that is our little sweet Autumn who came in to say hello right before I closed the door for my studio. So, all right, there's my guacamole bowl, guacamole bowl, oy, and my tortilla chips. And like I said, my little guy's going to have a little face. So that wasn't he cute? I just think he's so adorable. All right, I'm going to do some quick coloring with my blends. Um, for my tortilla chips, I picked kind of a, you know, when you hear the names, you're going to be like, what, seriously? I'm going to start out actually with... Um, uh, pale papaya, the light version of pale papaya, which you might think of as very pinky, and it kind of is, but it does have a little orange base in it. So I'm going to give it just a little base color of pale papaya. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in 
some daffodil over the top. And that's gonna pull together my tortilla chip color. So uh, the, or, the yellows are a little too bright, um, so I toned it down with a little bit of that pinky peach tone of pale papaya. And there are my tortilla chips. Hi, Judy, good to have you see you tonight. Way to catch me live, that's always exciting. I'm gonna use my um, Old Olive to do my guacamole bowl. Now what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna highlight in where some of the natural dark spots are that the artist drew in the line art of the bowl. Okay, so I highlighted these little extra bump spaces, a couple of the dots in those areas. Okay, and I did that with the marker tip of the brush, of the, of the marker. I know, Judy, oh my gosh, isn't that so cute? Oh shoot, Aunt Mary, hopefully that's just a feed on your end. Let me know, anybody else let me know if I sound funny to you and I will see if for some reason that's me. Not really sure what would be doing, although we are a little overcast down here all of a sudden tonight. We got fog, we got drizzle, we got a little snow. Oh, there she is, everybody say hi to Autumn. I will get her out of the picture in just a second because she's gonna decide that she's all done. <laughs> okay, so there is my little guacamole bowl. Okay, good, so you know, all clear here. So unfortunately, Aunt Mary, I'm sorry that it's fuzzy by you, um, which tells me it's probably a over-the-air issue, and then when you catch it later, like on YouTube, I'm hoping that will clear that up for you. You won't have the uh, broken up parts later. Okay, um, all right, so as you can see, I've got a little bit of highlight with the dark green going on in there with my old olive for my guacamole bowl. Then for the bowl itself, because I added the, uh, the, um, the face in there, I didn't want to cover it up too much. I know most of the time when you go get your fresh guacamole made at your table, it's kind of like in a black, uh, I know there's going to be a name for it and I can't think of what it is right now, um, but the little, like a mortar and pestle type bowl that they make it in. So I actually just grabbed my gray granite. So it's going to be a little bit to the dark, darker edge of spectrum, but it's not as dark as a black one would be. Um, and again, now I'm going to darken the bottoms with my brush tip or my pen, my marker pen tip. That's going to make that a little bit more intense and dark. Okay, so there is my little guacamole guy. All right, I'm going to attach him uh, with my adhesive, which I put down somewhere. Oh, there it is. As always, left it on the other end of the table. Oh, give me one second. I'm going to let Autumn out the door. Here you go, sweetie. There you go. There you go. All right. All right, so that's how we get a little visitor on our Monday night videos. <laughs> okay, now I can use both of my hands. As much as I love my kitty cat, she's got a... Uh, makes it a little difficult to keep stamping. <laughs> okay, so take your adhesive. Once you have your neutral circle all decorated up the way you want it to be, grab that other colored stock circle that you punched out at your two inches or die cut with your two inch circle dies, whatever you did. And that is gonna be your focal point piece, which you can just leave off to the side for a second. We'll go ahead and start on the phrase. So like I said, grab that three quarter inch strip that you have and whatever phrase you, you're, you're gonna use, you'll just trim this piece down to whatever size you need, okay? Mine's gonna be a little bit narrow, pretty narrow because my phrase says, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. And it's all stacked up on top of, on top of itself. So that'll be just that little bit. Holy guacamole, it's your birthday. Okay, now before you choose to cut it down, think a little bit of what you might like to do with it. If you have a shorter phrase like I do, you might consider have it sticking out from the side of your circle. So imagine this part here is in here, okay? So it could be sticking out from the side of your circle. You could cut it down to size and have it attach around any part of your circle, wherever your imagery seems to fit it. Um, and then again, too, if you want this guy to be on the other side of your paper, well, then I would have stamped it, you know, the other way so there was more hanging that I could tuck it behind here. But I think I'm gonna do something like this, where my whole phrase is gonna come out from behind my circle because this whole piece here should be less than the four inch width of my designer series paper. So something else to keep in mind, depending on how big or long your phrase is, see how it's gonna lay best on your DSP and then make your decision from there. So I'm gonna be able to just take my scissor and cut my holy guacamole off with a little bit of an end that I can now tuck behind my phrase. So I'm gonna add, Okay, first I'm gonna drop my adhesive on the floor. That's always helpful. Oh my goodness, I'm 
goodness gracious. That really went flying. Oh, Like I said, guys, it's been quite the Monday. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay, here we go. Adhesive on that end. Then I will put my little guacamole guy right there. And now my focal point is ready to go. All right. So go ahead and set that off to the side. Um, remember, again, this guy, the, your phrase can stand all on its own. It does not have to be attached or a part of your focal point image. It's just whatever you decide to do. All right. Now, we are going to turn this card base into a super simple fun fold. Um, and like I said, the, um, if you want to, grab your scoring tool and do a score at two and an eighth of an inch. And that's basically going to cut it in half. Oh, Tina, I'm sorry to hear you're having a Monday, girl. <laughs> Oh, uh, so, so you can have a score line go down the middle of the front if you like. Otherwise, let's start by giving our four and a quarter inch score line a really good burnish with your bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, but you do happen to have a scissor, maybe with a cover, um, something like that, you'd be a nice ruler that doesn't have a, like a nice plastic edge on it. Anything that's going to help you give that nice firm pressure to close up that fold and make it really, really sharp. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever it is going to be your card front. We're going to bend back on itself, line up the corners, top and bottom. So if you've already put it in that two and an eighth line, that's basically taking this line, bring it back on itself like that. Now again, grab your bone folder and go give it a nice slow stretch up and down and then you burnish that a little bit more. Okay. So as you can see now, your card is going to open like so, but because we have a very large front on it, it's going to almost look like the normal card fold until you go to open it. Okay, so grab that piece of designer series paper that you have that is four by five and a quarter, and you're only going to want adhesive on the left edge because it's going to go onto this piece here, but you don't want to tape it down accidentally to there. Okay, so just some adhesive on that part right there. Oops, let me make sure I have the right. I did. I wanted the green on the left edge. So I'm making sure I've got that in the right spot. All right, there's my adhesive again, just on the left edge. And because this is a four inch width, you are going to have a little bit of a border. So you are going to leave a little bit top and bottom and a little bit on your left edge. Okay. And so again, this is going to open like so. Now, if you do want to have, um, if you have a very dark colored cardstock, uh, kind of like I do, and you want to be able to stamp or write on the inside. Yes, Tina, acrylic blocks. I'm trying to think of something else that you have just right to hit, and literally, yes, acrylic block. Grab your acry acrylic block and use that to help your uh, your crease as well. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> uh, go ahead and cut a piece of neutral cardstock. Um, that would be the four by five and a quarter to fit inside. And when you do this, it will be completely covered up by this piece of four by five and a quarter, so you won't even see it. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add our focal point and your our phrase, and I'm going to use um, some dimensionals. That's up to you if you want to have it uh, stand up a little bit or not. Um, I like to always have a little bit of lift in some of the stuff I do, and I have actually a brand new sheet to break into tonight. That feels so exciting sometimes. All right, so I got a couple there, and I'm going to put one at the end of my phrase. Okay. Get rid of those. And then here is Holy Guacamole. And there you go. So that is as quick and simple as that can be. Uh, depending on what you've used for GSP, you can actually you, know, you can add more to this part of the, the concept. Add more, more behind your focal point, make your focal point bigger, make your focal point smaller, depending on what you're doing. Um, that designer series paper shine through along with whatever you have chosen for your focal point. Okay, so that is my sample tonight using Taco Fiesta. And let me grab a couple more. I have recently gotten the Friendly Gnomes uh, stamp set that's in the mini catalog. And it's kind of a partner set to the holiday. Um, so this one has some springtime imagery. Um, the gnome, one gnome has a little heart, one has some flowers. So much more springtime imagery um, and Valentine's like that. And I actually did two samples using it, but I didn't use a single gnome. <laughs> so the first one here, I used their little mushroom house uh, or toadstool, whatever they would call that. Um, this paper comes from the Country Lane collection. There's the one piece that has the, the red with the white hearts all over it. 
And there's a really cute little phrase in there that says gnome sweet gnome. And initially I was going to have that be just popping out kind of similar to this, but it's a little too long along with my focal point part. So I decided to just change up what I was doing and uh, lay it out like that. So it's still that three quarter inch width just broken up into little pieces. So gnome sweet gnome along with their cute little toadstool house. And again, that's going to open just like that, like we did in our first one. Um, in here, there's a couple cute little animals. There's a little tiny squirrel. There's a little bird. There's these flowers. Like again, I, this is the same thing, the friendly gnomes set, uh, not using any gnomes. <laughs> um, this actually comes from the Butterfly Designer Series paper. And I used Fresh Freesia and Parakeet Party, which are the colors right in here, to, you, to do some of the flowers here to match the flowers there. And it says, spring is everywhere. And I upgraded him to one of the stitched circles from the uh, uh, stylish shapes. There we go. Uh, I usually have a, a piece of note card next to me, which has my little cheat sheet of what I use, and I left it somewhere else. So um, going by, by memory, which is not, not always always the best thing for me, <laughs> especially on this Monday. Hi, Jesse. Thanks for popping in. Good to see you. Um, so yeah, so stylish shapes. I actually did do a die cut from that one with the parakeet just to give that a little bit of a uh, little more interest. Okay. Then this one here, there's a stamp set in that mini catalog called Silly Goose. So this is one of my goose friends. This is another new set I've gotten. And this is Tahitian Tide and Polished Pink. And my little goose friend is floating in an inner tube with a little froggy friend. And so I've got the You've Got a Friend in Me. And this is the glimmer paper, uh, the 6x6 glimmer paper that matches the In Color collection. So that's a Tahitian Tide. And they do it in ombre fashion. So it's very light at the top, going to darker at the bottom. So there is my sparkly and shiny one with um, Silly Goose. And then I broke out the By the Bay designer series paper. And I don't have the stamp sets or the dies that match it, but there are a few pieces of the DSP in there that have really easy images to cut out. So I fussy cut my bird. And then this piece here comes from that designer series paper pack. And it already kind of has the feel of sky and water and sand. And it just makes the background image nicely for you right away. And then I grabbed my go-to greetings for my happy birthday. And after I cut this piece down, I noticed on the flip side, it was already this navy blue color and has these really shiny seashell imagery on it. And so I decided to add that little stray piece that I cut off of my larger piece uh, when I was making it for this card. So I put that behind and you can see here, I, I flag tagged one of, the, um, one of the ends of that phrase. So when you are doing those and you're deciding what you want to do make sure you know you can chop them up you can change them you can have them be a part of the imagery not a part of the imagery um, that's really your call on that particular part and then I use the flat um, iridescent pearls to highlight him right there so again this bird just came directly fussy cut from one of the sheets of designer series paper really quick and easy to do actually um, I'm not usually a big fan of fussy cutting so when I do it, you guys know it's really simple. <laughs> All right, let me set these guys off to the side and I will show you how I stepped up uh, this version here. You can already see a little bit of it happening right in the bird card. I added a layer behind the DSP. So that's just about an eighth of an inch bigger. So it's four and an eighth by five and three eighths, I believe that would be. I add, I, instead of adding more, adding more bulk to my focal point, I took the tip of my black marker and I drew around the um, the vanilla piece. So it has the illusion of a black border without adding bulk of cardstock. Uh, because my idea was to have all the darker parts pop away on this particular one. So like you see, I, I, I did a black layer for this one. I did a black layer for my holy guacamole. And I also then stamped it in black. And I took my old olive blend and I kind of just did a quick scribble over it to just be a, a highlight of that green color. And then I added the black matte dots. Okay, so that is that right there. So really quick, easy way to do a, a Z fold card without a whole lot of extra work. Um, I hope you guys had a good time uh, with what you did. Make sure you show me, post and share. Um, I don't really mind if it's not stamping up. I just wanna see what you're doing. <laughs> um, as always, any questions, put them in the post. Um, once it's up, you can add, um, I'll have the, all the, um, numbers and products and all of names and everything like that so that you don't have to try to remember what they all are. I think I had everything named this time in my head pretty well, <laughs> um, but I'll make sure I have all the specifics written out um, in the post once I take all the pictures and stuff. So 
everybody. Have a good rest of your Monday. I hope the rest of your Monday is better than how mine's been so far. It's been a little nuts um, as Mondays go. So enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. And I will see you again here next Monday for some more inky fun together. Thanks. Have a great week.